Peace family. My name is Vicki Dillard for African Diaspora News Channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's such a privilege to be with you today. Would you do us a big favor? We are so happy. We're expanding our voice. We have our own app. Would you download it? Beloved, this is going to continue to make us a formidable, growing, unified voice. And how many of you all know the more that we expand, the more impact we can have around the world to push our issues forward? Thank you so much for signing up for that today. Beloved, you all know, uh, certainly many of you, about our brother Julius Malema. Uh, he is a top leader with the EFF, the Economic Freedom Fighters Party. Yes, in South Africa. Beloved, I came across this very powerful and arousing speech. And of course, he's an electrifying force in the first place. Believe it or not, he's a force that the United States is worried about, if I can be real. I may explain a little bit more about that in just a moment. But I want you to watch this first very brief clip. They've got no faces. Banner banks have manipulated the rent. But who is behind those banks? What are the faces of these people? Where do they stay? They don't tell us because it's white people. It's white people who manipulated the rent. And therefore white people can do anything they want to do and get away with it. No one cares. For 30 years, the inequality, the gap has widened. The rich have become more richer. The poor have become more poorer. And when I say the rich have become more richer, you are thinking of another black person. Whites have become more rich in South Africa than they were during apartheid. He says something very powerful here when it comes down to how the adversary moves. He was making a point, uh, and it was a kind of a, a, a very powerful and lengthy speech he did. But one of the points that he made was basically that if an African leader uh, was said to be corrupt, and I'm paraphrasing right now, if there was an African leader that was accused of being corrupt, we would know exactly who they are, their names, where they stayed, and everybody would come after them, right? He says, but the faces of those that's behind the banks, he said they're invisible. He said they have no faces. He said, who are they? He said, it's because they're the white boars. He said, that's why we don't know their names. Because he said, if it was a black corrupt person, everybody would be all over them. You would be talking about this black leader is corrupt. But the other powerful voices that's even more powerful than they, that was very likely behind their corruption, remains faceless and invisible. And how many of you all know that if they're faceless and invisible, that means that they're not held accountable. And if they're still faceless and invisible, they're not held accountable. That means they're still at work to undermine. First of all, I want to make this very profound point. And I heard uh, Minister Farrakhan say this years ago, that business is warfare. You can deduce that phrase to say economics is warfare. So anytime you see your brothers and sisters emphasizing reparation, restitution, and economics, so much so that they will put it in their political party, EFF, as the economic freedom fighters. How many of you all know that this is one of the front lines of warfare? When you start to deal with the economics and the wealth of a nation, just like we're seeing in West Africa, just like we're seeing in the areas of the Sahel and others, because they are holding the United States and France and these Western a predators accountable for the exploitation and theft of their resources. When you go to talking like that, you then become enemy number one. Are y'all hearing me today? But this is no new position for our brother Juli Julius Malema, which is why he's known in some circles in the United States. What do I mean? I came across this piece that was written about him from the Times Live in 2017. That's been over six years ago when this piece was written in the headline says you whites will lose everything Malema tells bankers. They do this piece on him from years ago here in the United States. I saw the piece here in the United States, I should say at least. And of course, it's not unusual for any times, but this is specifically Times Live that's associated with that. So this is not unusual for this part of the world. Uh, watch this, this publication that is. 
It says success is associated with whiteness, EFF leader Julius Malema said at a Rand Merchant Bank event yesterday. If white people can't see this and if they don't help to solve the country's problems, they will end up with nothing, he said. It talked about who he was accompanied with and so forth. And it says, the point we are making here is that success is associated with whiteness. A white minority continues to own and control 90% of South Africa's economy. That is not in the hands of foreign investors and pensions. That's powerful. He said that years ago. Why am I bringing this up now? The reason I'm saying that I know he's a problem for the United States is because the way the United States works, you don't have to be just in some specific physical small secret society council meeting to discuss some problematic revolutionary that you fear. When, the, when, when, when they do hit pieces, when the United States and Western countries put stuff in publications, they're sending an alarm to other powerful and influential people to watch this one. I'm trying to put you on game. He says that the oppressor, he said the whites, the boars are richer 30 years under this new democracy after apartheid than they were during. So the question just like I say to my black brothers and sisters here in the United States, when they start marching around singing the song, we should, we've overcome something. When they start bragging about the 1960s voting rights and civil rights that do nothing substantive for us. And when we look at the numbers, we find that we own even less. And when you take into consideration inflation and you do the modern adjustments economically, you find that we've actually backtracked in some metrics. So the question is, while they've gotten rid of the signs of apartheid and they've gotten rid of the signs of Jim Crow, segregation and separation, when they went covert, when they went invisible, it made them more effective because that means you actually believe that you've overcome something. You therefore stop trying to fight. But when we look at the numbers, he said that the whites here in New South Africa are richer than they were 30 years ago. He is such a threat that even Donald Trump under his administration was tripping about land appropriation with the farmers in South Africa. I did some pieces here right here on the African Diaspora News Channel over the past weeks and months discussing the back-to-back nonstop attacks that the United States Congress has put South Africa under, pointing out its BRICS association, its connection with Russia, its connections with China. They're already trying to attack them as well as other African nations who are a part of the AGOA, that free trade agreement between the United States and African nations. And they're trying to use that to sanction them when they don't twist and turn the way they want to. We see that the United States, by and through its ambassador, Mr. Brigitte, engaged in acts of sabotage of the RAND when it libelously accused South Africa of sending arms to Russia and the investigation found out that it was absolutely no evidence to prove that. That was intentional in my opinion. But our brother Julius Malema specifically says, specifically, that the RAND is being manipulated by and through the banks and by and through the whites there. Family, it's time for us to stop majoring on minors and minoring on majors. I believe in holding individual black leaders accountable for corruption, of course. But you're really doing something when you go after the truly powerful who's by, who's a hidden hand that's moving the entire system. How about you do that homework? How about you do that investigation? Shout out to our brother, Julius Malema, as well as the EFF party. I'm learning so much. But business is warfare. Economics is warfare. And it's time for us to start making the demands to cut the check. My name is Vicky Dillard. Thank you so much for tuning into my broadcast here on African Diaspora News Channel. Be sure, of course, to share the broadcast and check out my new, the Vicky Dillard Mystery School Mastermind that's coming up. Go to my website at vickyplanet.com. That's V-I-C-K-I planet.com to find more information about it. At least join my, my email list so that you're notified. I can't wait to see you again.